Brett Hickey coming up. Hi, Brett. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Glenn. Welcome. Brett is the uh, founder and CEO of Star Mountain Capital, uh, and he is going to give us a presentation on investing in the growth engine in America. Uh, pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is the opportunities within the U.S. lower middle market, how we define that, and uh, just as a, as a first um, order here, this is not a solicitation in any capacity or an offering of any securities. If there's anything you'd like to know more about, um, please reach out and, and contact us and info at starmountaincapital.com or go to starmountaincapital.com and you can reach out to us. So what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is the U.S. and following up on the last presentation, Canada as well, uh, where I'm from originally, I've lived here for approximately 20 years now in the U.S., but the markets are very similar. We have one, an aging demographic, and an aging demographic that, as I think everybody knows, is more aged than it has ever been. And that percentage of the population that is in that retirement phase post the baby boomer population after World War II is tremendous. So if you take into account that the lower middle market in the U.S., which we generally think of as businesses that are between approximately 10 million and 200 million of annual revenue. So not startups, but not companies that can access the larger capital markets where the big branded asset managers of the world will generally invest, the big investment banks are active. So if you get into the world where the big players don't play, but you're not a startup, that's really what we think of as the US lower middle market in simple terms. That marketplace represents approximately 50% the entire US GDP. That's half the entire market of the most developed market in the world. Uh, within that market, you have hundreds of thousands of private businesses, many of whom are owned by people that want to retire, sell, or do something. Yes, some will pass their businesses along to their children, but many won't. And so when you take into account those just factual drivers of people wanting to transact, and you overlay that with perhaps the largest valuation gap or differential that we've ever had in history, which really comes from the public markets being at all time highs, and then the lower, mar lower middle market of private businesses being much less efficient and therefore having a lot lower valuations, that creates another demand driver for people to say, how do we grow to be a little bit bigger so we can sell at a higher valuation? And so what Star Mountain specializes in largely is what we call value-added lending, where we work with business owners as a capital partner and an active strategic consultative partner to help them find acquisitions, make acquisitions, grow organically the right way, get new customers, build their boards, and so forth to get to that next level and ultimately have the objective of selling at a much higher valuation. And so... I mentioned this in a broader term because I think the opportunities in the lower middle market are really being overlooked by many. Whether you're a credit investor or a private equity investor, we have both divisions here at Star Mountain Capital, or another vertical that you can access it, which some people might be familiar with, is called secondaries. So just like public stocks trade, private stocks don't have a trading market. So when you make a private investment, then you sell it to somebody else, such as making a limited partnership investment in a fund, if you then want to sell it, that's often called a secondary. So it's now being owned by a second person. And so in that business, we will buy at Star Mountain limited partnership interests and positions from other people in the lower middle market. So with all of that, having somebody local in over 20 cities across the country, having approximately 80 people on our team and over $2 billion in assets under management, we have a tremendous lens and scope into the lower middle market and they're really the opportunity set is phenomenal uh, for people thinking about being operators in this space that need new vibrant operators, for people wanting to be board members, people wanting to be investors. Uh, there really is a tremendous opportunity that you don't have to go deep into emerging markets and take all those type of risks to get what we believe can be uh, outsized returns you know, relative to the risk. So that's a little bit about the marketplace at a high level that I wanted to share with you because I think in... Building businesses, I sit on the global board of Harvard's alumni entrepreneurs, and when, when I went to the executive program at Harvard Business School, 
one of the things they talked to us about at the very beginning, if you be a business owner to get into it was, how is your business differentiated? And what problems are you solving? And what we noted is that a lot of really big companies made a lot of sense 30 years ago, but the future is much less clear. So the answer for some of those people is, well, we should actually sell because in fact, we really don't have a differentiated business anymore. And it's really hard to differentiate and so I think it's good to think about marketplaces that have tailwinds, investment strategies that have tailwinds where you don't have to hope to find the next Google. You don't have to hope to time the markets or something that, um, you know, I'm sure as Glenn can attest to is over time and time again, it's just hard to do. So that's a little bit about Starmount and why we built a specialized business in the space. Here on page five, you can see a couple other data points that are helpful about opportunities in the lower middle market. One is we like to at Star Mountain refer to ourselves as being data-driven investors. We have two offices in India. We have a lot of custom-built technology. We do have boots on the ground local, so technology doesn't displace building relationships, evaluating businesses, working hand-to-hand -hand in person with people, but we want to supplement that with technology, with data. And so we opened our first office in India, for example, over a decade ago where we now have nine full-time people. In the top left, what you can see is a graph showing you that lower middle market companies in the US, and this data from the US government footnote in the bottom, have historically grown revenues faster, so a higher revenue per year on average, and in a less volatile manner than the S&P 500, right? all publicly available data that way. And that's interesting to a lot of people because they often think, well, hey, small, doesn't that mean they fall off a cliff when a challenge happens? Startups are extremely risky. The failure rate of a startup is north of 90%. But if you can be a survivor and you've grown through that challenged phase, interestingly enough, the businesses on average become much more resilient, but still passionate, driven, often good products and services that tend to grow faster. So I always like to say to college students, for example, is a simple question. Which line would you, la would you rather lend to or invest equity in? The more volatile one or the less volatile and faster growth one? So it's kind of interesting because it's different than what somebody would otherwise assume. And I think what a lot of people miss is the fact that in the larger markets, in the publicly traded markets, there are very little barriers to entry. Um, I live in um, Greenwich, Connecticut. And the price of a house here versus in Birmingham, Alabama, where we have a satellite um, office location for deal origination, exact same house, exact same materials, traded very different values, right? Supply demand, people often forget about because in finance theory, we all think risk and reward. And so you hope that if you have a lower return, you hope that you're getting a lower risk when in fact, there are many other variables that that may not be the case. So I think that's a good lesson in being a data-driven fact investor versus a psychology, uh, psychological investor, um, especially right now, given the momentum in a lot of stocks and investing that's often a challenging market in the future. In the top right-hand corner, you can see what I was referring to earlier as the valuation arbitrage, where if you can grow a smaller business, do one or two acquisitions, uh, or help just grow a company organically that's growing quickly, we have companies in telehealth and other things like that. Generally speaking, those valuations can increase a lot because they enter a more efficient market, more buyers, more sellers, and you can sell your cash flows at a higher valuation. Um, let me go on to a couple other things. A lot of people ask, what does value-added lending mean, right? Well, we all know what a bank is and what a bank does. And if you want passive, low-cost capital for something generic, a bank is a fantastic partner. If, on the other hand, you want to sell your business and you want a strategic private equity partner, there are a lot of private equity firms. But what I've found over the last 20 years investing in the alternative asset class is there's often not a lot in between, especially in the lower middle market. So if you're a business owner and you say, look, I'd love to buy it by one of my competitors. Um, you know, he or she would like to retire. I know their business well, they plug in really well and just really adding the customers. It's an easy integration. 
of an assisted living business or IT service business or whatever it might be. Um, I'd love to do that, but I've never done that before. How do I do it the right way? How do I integrate it? How do I evaluate it? How do I look for the challenges? And what I found is that there are a lot of opportunities like that where business owners would rather rent a strategic partner like Star Mountain than sell to them, where you can borrow capital and get a strategic capital partner along with that, but you still own the business. And that's a value proposition that in this aging demographic and with that valuation arbitrage is in more demand than it ever has been in the 20 years that I've been doing this. Uh, one of the other things that I tried to do in building Star Mountain Capital is not to be another me too business, to try to bring something different to the market, add differentiated value to the businesses that we're providing capital to and to the investors who invest with us and ultimately creating incremental economic value, which is often referred to as alpha in the investment world. As part of that, what we look to do is bring proven large market resources, relationships, and knowledge into these established but small and medium-sized private businesses that don't often have access to the resources, the relationships, and the knowledge that in the larger markets people have access to with the Blackstones and KKRs and Goldman Sachs of the world that don't play in this end of the market, generally speaking. And so over the last 11 years in building Surround Capital, I've assembled a team that I'm very honored to have as partners and proud of that have ran some of the biggest financial institutions in the world. Uh, my partner, Brian Finn, was the president of Credit Suisse versus Boston, managing a $100 billion asset management business and 18,000 employees. Uh, as an example, other partners of mine have run multi-billion dollar control private equity firms, um, $50 billion plus lending programs at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and so forth over their careers. And we've really tried to assemble like a puzzle with a specific business model and saying, what are the resources and skills and relationships to help us find these businesses, evaluate them, add value to them in the upside, help protect value if they have challenges in the downside, and really be that differentiated value proposition to both business owners uh, and investors. And this is a little bit of that on my team. Culture. Uh, I think we would all agree that culture matters, but what does culture mean? It means very different things to very different people. When I formed the name Star Mountain Capital, there is no Star Mountain. Uh, I did grow up skiing on Silver Star Mountain a lot, so I was probably in the back of my mind a little bit in the branding, but really the star is our shareholder alignment. It's the North Star of Star Mountain. And one of the key things is alignment of interest. So to that end, we are a 100% employee-owned firm, and I provide carried interest and a share in the profits to 100% of our employees, including executive assistants, office managers, so that we're all working as a team to find challenges and solve them, to find opportunities and capitalize on them and to work as an integrated, united and aligned team. And I think that is critical um, to any business is alignment of interest so that people are really rowing in the same direction and waking up every day, caring about the business because it's their business as well. And as a result of that is one of our pillars and how we try to really invest in team and talent as our most valued asset. We've been uh, proud to be awarded as best places to work by broad industry groups like Cranes, as well as more specific to the asset management space, pension and investment. And diversity is part of that in building diversity. I know there's a lot of conversation around that. Our approach is that we acknowledge that there is a lack of diversity in the private equity investment space. And we think it's really an approach bottoms up in developing talent. Uh, we have our YouTube channel and other things. We build talent, we develop talent, we educate talent to bring people into this space. Uh, versus trying to laterally hire what might not always really exist. We really believe in developing to sustainably and productively help solve that gap into the future is one of the aspects we do there. And we think some challenges in life um, are not profit-driven, they're philanthropic. And to that end, we have the Star Mountain Charitable Foundation that does not have any profit motive associated with it. 
in helping solve and focus on problems that truly require a philanthropic approach to them. This is just a map of people we have across the country. And this is an example of some of our other digital media you can find on our YouTube channel, LinkedIn, and so forth, where we'll get a million plus viewers a year. Uh, let me pause there, Glenn, and happy to take any questions. Thank you. Terrific. Thank, thank you, Brett. Thank you for the presentation and, and, and the overview. Very, uh, very well done. I, I, I was um, interested in the, the concept of the value-added lending. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with with um, family businesses and, and people trying to develop their exit plan, sometimes the hardest thing is to, for them to let go, right? Uh, and this sounds like you, you you guys give an opportunity for them to to seek what they need, but still kind of almost kind of think about it as they as they as they go through the process to say, okay, right? Because it's a partnership, it's a relationship. They're getting, you know, they're obviously. Uh, respecting you and, and, and leveraging on you. But the fact that you're kind of there with them as a partner, I think that that's an interesting aspect that you don't often see. Yeah, well, what I found to that end, Glenn, is that, as you said, people are not often ready to immediately just let go and go from zero to 100, but a phased approach or a step function approach to say, let's take a three-year, a five-year, two-year, 18-month, whatever it might be, let's create a game plan and work together in saying, you want to sell, but when you sell, you want to do it at maximum value. And you want to protect your business when you head into that process. And a lot of business owners have never been through that before. And there are better ways and worse ways to approach anything in life. Uh, and that's really where the expertise of being partners that have ran some of the largest investment banking divisions in the world at Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Credit Suisse, and so forth private equity partners, operators, many of my team have been CEOs doing this themselves and then being credit lenders as well so that they can say, okay, I don't need to sell yet, but let's gear up. What are the things I need to do when I sell? What's the additional executive team, the additional reporting? How do I think about customer diversification? Who are my end buyers going to be? What are they going to value? What are they not going to value? And how do I get all my ducks in a row for that? And when you go to an investment banker, they don't do that for you. You could hypothetically go to McKinsey Consulting or Bain Consulting, but for smaller businesses, that's very cost prohibitive. And then if you need capital and, and that bundling of services with capital is really something that's it's hard to find because it really requires a specialized approach. Well, you know, the conference is obviously about entrepreneurship. Uh, and we've heard earlier, earlier uh, in some earlier segments, a, a lot of entrepreneurship also involves mentorship. And in a way, in a way, Star, Star Mountain is, is is doing that as well. You're you're kind of mentoring here with, uh, you know, with with the business owner. You're kind of getting them to that that next level when they're when they're otherwise otherwise ready to uh, kind of kind of move ahead. You know, and as it plays out, you know, when you you said almost uh, even though it's the, the the smaller part of the middle market, people forget that the middle market when you aggregate it, as you pointed out, is pretty substantial. I mean, fifty percent of the GDP. Sitting, sitting, sitting in this space gives, gives I'm sure you guys a pretty, pretty good bite at the apple here in trying to help. We look at an average about twenty billion dollars uh, of investment opportunities a year, which is generally fifteen hundred different investment opportunities every year that we selectively invest in thirty to forty of those. It's it's a huge, huge market. It just it's fragmented. It's complex, and that's what requires a specialized approach, but it's that market inefficiency that really allows us to target, you know, better returns. And what we do is a value proposition for the business owners, where to your point, we have skin in the game as well. And they love that. We're not coming to them, just giving them advice. We're saying, we're going to put real money in. You know, I've got a substantial amount of my personal net worth invested, as do my partners. And we're putting our capital in with you to help you, not just tell you what you should do and bill you by the hour. We're here to provide you with our thoughts and guidance and capital, but it's still their business. So if they don't want our advice at the end of the day, you know, they get to choose. It's not like we have a crystal ball. We think we have pretty good clarity into what generally plays out best and doesn't, but every situation, every business owner is a bit different. And that's, um, you know, that's the reality of the world. 
Well, it's it's like anything. Else. It's a journey, and you're and you're walking. You're kind of walking beside them. I think what you said about your your team, and you've got a tremendous pedigree there of uh, of people with experience. But but through the whole organization, the fact from a partnership standpoint, and everybody kind of being part of that team that that's a that's a wonderful from a you know from an alignment standpoint of everybody's interest. It's a wonderful way to be. So congratulations on you. on on your team formation and and your success. Thank you. I'll share one last thing with you on sure. that plan is a lot of people say, well, why do you, like I'm part of the Young Presidents organization. I've been in for 13 years with, with a bunch of other CEOs. And a lot of friends of us, why would you give away all this equity? I said, well, I'm, I don't really feel like I'm giving it away. I feel like I'm getting partners. I'm getting people that think as close to myself and our investors as possible so that we're helping build value and protect value. And so I think I actually get a lot for what I give in aligning interests with people by them really being partners in the business, even at a very small scale, they're still economically motivated and aligned and focused, which I think is a critical part of today's day and age is focus and alignment. Yeah. Well, you know, you take a, you take a little bit of extra extrinsic modification and it quickly becomes intrinsic, right? It becomes, no. it, it becomes part of their, this is my business too. That's right. Well said. And, and, they, and they otherwise kind of succeed that way. So listen, thank you. Uh, tremendous presentation. So very impressive. Uh, continued success as we move forward. Uh, and again, your, your information is in the speaker tab as well if anyone wanted to reach out uh, from the conference. And, and Brett, thank you for joining us today and, and, and best of luck in the future, okay? Thank you to everybody as well. Thanks, Glenn.